Hello, what is going on everyone? Let's talk about the lifetime learning credit. That's why you're here, right? Well, the lifetime learning credit is really cool because it can save you a bunch of money on your taxes if you are trying to better yourself through higher education. In this video, we are going to talk about the who, what, when, where, why, and how much. Pretty much everything that you need to know about the lifetime learning credit and how much money it can save you. First though, so we're all on the same page, let's talk about what a tax credit actually is, okay? It's just so we all know. So a tax credit, very briefly explained, it will reduce your tax bill dollar for dollar. So if you have a $1,000 tax credit and you have a $2,000 tax bill, the tax credit will eliminate that $1,000 of it and you will have a $1,000 tax bill. So tax credits are an awesome way, a very powerful way to get a bunch of money back on your tax return for you to pay a lot less in taxes in general. Uh, they're just awesome. Don't get them confused with tax deductions, which reduce your taxable income. Tax credits are much more powerful and they actually directly reduce your tax bill. So you want to maximize as many tax credits as you can. And if you can qualify for the lifetime learning credit, then you should definitely take it. Speaking of who, who does qualify for the lifetime learning credit? So keep in mind that the lifetime learning credit is just one of many uh, education tax credits uh, that are offered, you know, and one that you might also know about is the American Opportunity Tax Credit. And the American Opportunity Tax Credit is completely different from the lifetime learning credit. It's actually more powerful. Uh, just for this video, we are just going to be talking about the lifetime learning credit. So the lifetime learning credit is for anyone who has eligible out-of-pocket expenses for higher education. Those expenses also must be from an eligible institution of higher learning. And the person that is being claimed for this tax credit, they need to be on the tax return of which they need to be like either like a dependent or be the individual or the spouse on that tax return for which the credit is being claimed. That is pretty simple. Now, what is this tax credit for? Well, it is basically just a tax credit that incentivizes you to continue learning, gaining job skills, uh, bettering yourself through higher education, and it can be claimed pretty much every single year for the rest of your life, granted that you actually have out-of-pocket expenses for higher education, and granted that you meet the other requirements that we'll talk about a little bit more later on. Now, where you're going to actually file for this tax credit, it has its own tax filing form. So let me put that up on the screen really quick. And as you can see, the form for the lifetime learning credit is form 8863. Uh, it is part of the education credits form. It includes the American Opportunity and the lifetime learning credit. So on there, you will see the different ones and uh, what you need to qualify for them. You know, it's very simple uh, on here, but at the same time, it's complicated as everything is with taxes and if you're filing with an online tax filing software such as TurboTax like I recommend then it will be doing all of this for you filling it all out for you uh, and you'll just have to input any information that it asks for but form 8863 is where you would calculate it if you were doing it by hand. Now let's get to the most important part and that is how much this tax credit is worth. It's probably what you're looking for and it was definitely what I was looking for uh, when I first learned about this tax credit. Uh, but before I talk about that, let me just say I'd really appreciate it if you could just give me a like on this video if you are appreciating this video, if you like this video, and consider subscribing to the channel as well because I put out new information on personal finance, taxes, saving, investing, and things like that every single week. Right now, Tuesdays and Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm putting out new information uh, all the time, and I know that there is something that I can definitely help you with. And if you want help with anything, please feel free to also leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it uh, to the fullest extent possible. That is what we are all about here at On Cashflow. Uh, anything that has to do with personal finance, building your wealth, saving money on taxes, and things like that. Uh, speaking of that, let's talk about how much you can get from this tax credit. So the lifetime learning credit is worth up to $2,000 of a tax credit per tax return. So it's not per student, you know, it's not per person or anything like that is per tax return. So up to $2,000. And the way it is calculated is it is 20% of your qualified higher education expenses up to $10,000 because 20% of $10,000 is $2,000. So basically in order to get the full tax credit, you have to have $10,000 of eligible out-of-pocket education expenses. Granted, you meet the other requirements, of course, which is one of the things that you need to keep in mind. So you need to keep in mind that 
there are income phase outs like there are with almost everything else in the tax code. So the income phase out for a single person begins at 58,000 and it goes up to 68,000 to where you can no longer qualify for the credit after $68,000 of modified adjusted gross income. Now modified adjusted gross income is one of those things I dislike. Uh, I do like adjusted gross income, but I dislike modified adjusted gross income because basically it adds back some of some of the like deductions that you took, some of the adjustments to your income, it kind of adds it back to make your, because uh, your modified adjusted gross income is usually gonna be higher than your adjusted gross income. Uh, but really that's for another video, but the phase outs for this tax credit are based on your modified adjusted gross income. So 58,000 to 68,000 is where the phase out is for a single person. It is double that for a married filing jointly couple. So that would be 116,000 where it begins the phase out up to 138,000 to where the credit is wiped out for the lifetime learning credit. So keep those phase outs in mind when you are trying to calculate uh, if you're eligible for this tax credit and how much you're going to receive. Another requirement that you need to keep in mind is you actually need to receive a 1098 tax T from your school. And I'll put that up on the screen really quick just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, now this is the example one from the IRS, but all schools, basically qualified higher education locations will send you this document, uh, especially if you had out of pocket expenses. So you have to have that form uh, in order to claim this credit. Now another thing you need to keep in mind is that this tax credit is non-refundable. So it means if it reduces your tax bill to less than zero, let's say you had a $1,000 tax bill and you met the requirement for the maximum tax credit of $2,000, well, it would reduce your tax bill to zero, but you wouldn't get a refund of $1,000. It would just keep your tax bill at zero dollars and is non-refundable. And those are the most important things that you need to know about the lifetime learning credit. And if you're still unsure about it, the IRS has a pretty cool tool when it comes to uh, educational credits and which ones you can qualify for because if you can qualify for the other one which is the AOTC instead of the LLC which is the American Opportunity Tax Credit rather than the Lifetime Learning Credit uh, then it probably is going to be more beneficial for you to take that credit uh, and you can just fill out a little questionnaire on the irs.gov website uh, and it'll tell you if you qualify for what tax credit and how much and it'll give you the estimate rather it'll give you the estimation for that um, so you can just search that and find that if you really need to find out you know just by watching this video i bet that i can tell that you are very interested in personal finances and saving money on taxes and one thing that i really highly recommend that you do is you watch this video that i created about financial independence and how to achieve it in 10 years or less uh, because if you don't know what financial independence is, it's basically gaining enough wealth to where you could theoretically uh, not have to work in order to support yourself. It is the ultimate form of financial security and everyone should try to achieve financial independence because it's known as something else later on down the line. It's known as retirement. But you don't have to wait until you're of retirement age to become financially independent. You should and can become financially independent at a much younger age. And I made this video, this resource that can definitely walk you through everything that you need to know in order to become financially independent. I talk about taxes, I talk about cutting expenses, I talk about increasing your income, I talk about investing, I talk about saving money, I talk about everything that has to do with financial independence and how you can achieve it. If you have any kind of interest in financial independence or pretty much anything that has to do with personal finance, I'd highly recommend that you give that video a watch. I will put a link to that in the description below and I will put it in a comment as well. Uh, also, you should see it pop up right next to me just right about now. Um, and you should definitely check out that video. If you enjoyed this video though, give me a like on this video. I'd really appreciate that. And consider subscribing to the channel. New information on personal finance every Tuesday and Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you out. I'm Zach from oncashflow.com and I also hope to see you next time.